Hello, EBR, and thank you for joining us on our ELA PD on standards alignment and pacing. Here with you today, my name is Kodia Greengranny, and I am one of your ELA curriculum content trainers. Also joining me is my partner, Dana Williams Harris, who is also an ELA curriculum content trainer here in the East Baton Rouge Parish School System. On today's agenda, we'll be discussing our data round table feedback, along with our ELA prior standards. We'll dive deeper into an item analysis of our standards. We'll discuss the alignment of standards across all of the resources that are available to us here in EBR. We will also have a practice session, a planning session, and then we'll close out with a discussion of our ELA resources and upcoming events. Now, let's briefly discuss our Division of Academics goals for the 2022 and 2023 school year. Our instructional focus as we continue to do walkthroughs throughout the year. First, we'll be listening for a high level questioning. Feel free to take the time to study Webb's depth of knowledge to know how those questions and tasks sound and look. We'll also be looking for a high level task, student engagement, an accountable talk. Many times in the classes, we are seeing the teachers facilitating and we would like to see the students doing the most of the heavy lifting. So our instructional framework helps to define our quest to provide our students with academic excellence and choice in a diverse and equitable environment. Our coherence framework is our compass and guide that will keep us focused on creating systems and structures in order to do work around the systemic improvement, ultimately improving all of our schools and increasing scholar achievement. Here are our superintendents, six keys to success initiatives. Take a moment to look at your screen. How does your work connect to the six keys? I want you to ask yourself, which of the six keys directly impact the instruction you provide at your grade level? Also understand how do other grade levels impact your works directly? Although the task may seem impossible, nothing, nothing is impossible. impossible. So as we begin, and I know that we are virtual, but we still would like to take a second to go through our meeting norms. One, be fully present. Limit sidebars. Use technology appropriately. Disagree with ideas, not people. Start and end on time. And of course, we love to have fun. So let's start with our icebreaker. How well do you know your standards? What you're going to do is take a moment to match the ELA strand codes with the correct standard. So let's take a look at them first. Here are a few standards and strand codes, which cover both elementary and the middle school level, grades four and eight. Read over the standards posted. How many do you think you can match correctly? Let's take a moment. Feel free to pause the video to take a moment to answer these. So, how well did you do? Let's see, did you get them all correct? We have two fourth grade standards. RL 4.3, describe in depth a character setting or event in a story or drama, drawing on specific details in the text. And did you catch on that Two of those standards, RI 4.1 and RL 4.1, will still have the same wording. One would be informational text and the other would be the literary text, the same as in grade eight. So as we continue to work with our standards, we want you to know what we hear as we are trying to support teachers in ELA. 
sometimes we hear it really doesn't matter at this time because the standards will spiral. Miss Granny, what else do we hear? Well, what about our curriculum is not even aligned to the ANET assessment? Hmm, I hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. I also hear, uh, yeah, I did mention the standards. They're actually on the board, but I'm gonna dig into them a little later. And what's the purpose of knowing the standards if I'm teaching the curriculum that you gave me? And every time we ask a teacher or even email, how can I be of an assistance to you? We always hear, I have it. Thanks. Thanks. And we are here to support you. So in order to make sure that we are moving in the correct direction, we want to take the minute to go over what we heard at our data roundtable. So here is some of the feedback. When you're looking at your ANET standards for third, fourth, and fifth, tell me, what is something that you immediately noticed? I was able to pull the ANET data to address the lowest standard from each grade level. As you analyze this, I want you to understand that when you look at the ANET data, you will see that RI31, RI41, RI51, and RL in those same categories are our lowest, but they are the exact same. Reading literature and reading information standards are the same, and we have to take a closer look at the standards. What we notice is that we're missing both, which will give us the bang for our bucks. So let's look a little deeper and take a moment to discuss why we are missing the standards at each grade level. Well, we know when we are looking at RI1 and RL1, we are asking and answering questions to demonstrate understanding of a text. Well, remember, if we go back to second grade, and I don't have it here, but second grade students at RL21, RI21, are asked and answering questions with the five W's, who, what, when, where, and how. And then when we talk about fourth grade, fourth grade tells us to refer to the details so it's asking you to make sure that students already know how to ask and answer questions because now they want you to refer to the details in a text when explaining what the text says. By the time students arrive in fifth grade, they're going to use all of the knowledge that they have gained from second grade up until now to quote accurately from the text, meaning students should be able to ask they should be able to refer, and now they are quoting directly from the text. So let's dive into the data with the item analysis. As we gather our data, remember data drives your instruction. When I take a moment to look at the ANET data for all of fourth grade, I am noticing certain certain characteristics. But this time, I want you to pause the screen. Take a closer look at the fourth grade data. What was the overall weakness? What the weakness, the weakest standard, I'm sorry. What was the strongest standard? Why is that? Why is that the strongest and why is it the weakness? Provide a rationale for both. And then think about what can we now do to improve student performance? I'm going to give you time to pause the screen, talk to your colleagues and discuss. Take a moment to really pull out our K-12 standards and look at the standards in detail and understand why we are where we are at. So as we move to discuss secondary standards, Take a moment to look at these and tell me, what do you immediately notice? Through these, you'll notice many of our lower standards are the same. You'll see those same standards that are repeating throughout the year, but they do continue to build. They build year to year. 
If we take a moment to understand our power standards, many of our teachers, as we get to a point, we start to wonder what was taught or learned by those students the previous year. Well, this shows that although it's the same standard, the details of the standards begin to grow. So first, let's use this as an example. You'll see the sixth grade, eighth grade, and ninth and 10th grade standards of RI and RL 6.1, 8.1, and 9th and 10th grade. Notice how that same standard builds, citing textual re relevant textual evidence to support an analysis of what the text says explicitly in sixth grade. Then by eighth grade, you're citing relevant textual evidence that most strongly supports an analysis. And then by high school, we want students still to cite, but at that point, we want them to cite relevant and thorough textual evidence. Again, notice how that same standard build in rigor across the grade levels. So those teachers would have to realize, how do I build on what these students have learned in the previous years with this same standard? So let's take a moment to dive into our data and an item analysis, looking at some of those same power standards that have recurringly become low throughout the grade levels. This grade level will focus in on eighth grade. Once again, let's take a moment to look at the numbers from our data roundtables ANET and what was the weakest standard. Take a moment to look at the strongest standard and think about what would be a rationale for both. Why do you believe the weakest standard is the weakest and why is the strongest the strongest? What can we do to improve the student performance year after year on some of these recurringly low standards. This might be an opportunity for you as a grade level team to really analyze your school data. Ask yourself those same questions that we asked ourselves as we gather district data. Take the time for your school to remember what is the weakest standard, what's the strongest standard. Provide a rationale for both it might be how the question was worded. It might be, I haven't taught that multiple times. Or now you have to think about what can we do to improve our students' performance? In order for us to really gather students and move them forward, we have to truly understand how our data is compiled. And we know that when we're looking at our assessment guides, we know that all students must take the LEAP test at the end of the year. This is our big backwards design focus. This assessment guide addresses all of our ELA standards, but in the interim, we have other assessments and other curricular resources that will help build our students to mastering what they will complete on LEAP. One of them is our ANET assessment. When we're talking about our standards, we want to look at what standards are addressed during that unit. We know that if you're looking at the assessment guidance, even in ANET, you can see how the standards are being used through your questions, and they provide you a rationale for why each question was incorrect. Take the time to look at RI43. RI43 tells us to explain events, procedures, ideas, or concepts in a historical, scientific, or technical text. Include what happened and why, based on specific information in the text. Well, when I listen to RI43, I hear science, I hear social studies. This is definitely one of those times where I should be working with science teachers and social studies teachers in order for them to see the same question. Because now we are cross collaborating with each other to make sure that our students are getting 
the opportunity of maximizing our exposure. Our lessons in guidebook. So we're focusing on RI43. If we look at RI43, we see that the lesson is incorporated at least in every section for the, for the, the unit of study. You have to take the time out to really guide yourself through the lesson planning process. We know that the lesson plan has been done for you. However, it is maximized to provide support for the entire district. We do not know exactly the needs of each of your individual students. So you want to look at RI43 and you want to say, who will need that additional support? How will I utilize what I know about this standard to support students in the instructional tasks with the student engagement and the accountable talk? For wit and wisdom, we also have a module map. That module map focuses on the standard as well. And it tells you to generate and respond to observations about questions. Think about what do you notice and what do you wonder? in order to maximize our standards to help our students grow. In ANET, this is how we can actually support our students. On the home page of your ANET assessment screen, it provides you this curriculum map of standards assessed throughout each of the assessment time periods. Let's take a moment to look at assessment number two. In assessment number two, I've boxed in RI41 through RI44 because although the standards was not addressed in assessment two, they were addressed in assessment unit one. But how do I maximize this opportunity when my students do not see it on a regular basis, Ms. Gradney? What can I do now? Well, here's an opportunity. Utilize Achieve 3000. We have partnered up with Achieve 3000 to make sure that our teachers can supplement activities to support the gaps that is built in our ANET assessment. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that you're looking at the teacher information. So that way when you see it in Achieve, Achieve have broken down opportunities for you to address the standard, and it even tells you which activity questions you're going to see those standards play in. That's your item analysis. You have to really look and dive deep to see, have my students mastered this? And if not, what's next for me? Our ELA team have teamed up with Achieve 3000 to make sure that you have an opportunity to utilize articles and tasks based on your curricula study. If you need more information about Achieve 3000, please do not hesitate to reach out to ourselves, to Ms. Granny and I, or even Dr. Courtney Brown. She's wonderful in supporting teachers in order to make sure that we maximize our growth. So as we begin to talk about the alignment of the secondary standards, let's first take a look at the Louisiana student standards for ELA. Notice our reading standards for literature. We can take a focus on RI 8.1 and 8.4. Well, as we continue through those standards, we'll also see the standards for RL and RI 8.1 and 8.4. We can see how they align through each of the resources that we have access to. So those will be the Louisiana state standards. As we continue, we'll see those same standards in the ANET assessment. Once we take the time to dive in and understand where these standards will be repeated, and how important it is to ensure that we are appropriately hitting the keywords and the meaning of those standards.
to make sure that the students are getting an understanding and comprehension of the standards that are being taught. So let's take a moment to focus on the curriculum alignment to the ANET assessment, sorry, as well as the standards. Notice that we've taken the time to look at how these standards repeat throughout the curriculum. Of these standards, only one was not repeated in the curriculum. However, due to the RI standards being addressed in the curriculum, we'll notice here that the RL standards were not touched. So when the students and the teachers take the time to analyze these standards and the alignment, you'll know which standards you have to take the time to teach at a deeper level. Now, let's take a moment to de dive deep into the Achieve 3000. We'll focus on one of the stories, the uplifting story of Tyler Perry. Here, you can see on the home screen of the story, once again, the alignment of the standards, Achieve 3000 makes it very easy to find them. And as my partner said, we have linked many of these alignment um, stories from Achieve 3000 to our lesson plans already. But when you click into that story, you immediately see on the homepage, the Louisiana standards and the alignment to the standards that are in the curriculum and the breakdown of those standards throughout Achieve 3000. And with our final resource, our My Perspectives curriculum, with this tier one curriculum, the standards from the Louisiana state standards have already been aligned with the curriculum that we are using. And once again, you'll see those same RI 8.1 and 8.4 standards that are aligned through all of the resources that are available to us. So let's practice. We are gonna take the time to ask that you pull up a lesson in guidebooks, lesson 17, 18, and 20. If you're using wit and wisdom, it'll be lesson 12, 15, and 20. And in my perspective, we're gonna focus on the language standard in 8.6 and the RL standard 810. So this is what we want you to do. We're going to unpack the standards. And all of this is in our bit.ly that is on the front page for us. We'll make sure that at the end we go back so that you can actually pull the documents in order to practice and support each other in grade level planning. So you're going to unpack the standards. Discuss what instructional strategies can be used. And if you feel that the DOK level represents a level one, what can be done to increase the level? Same thing that you would do in your classroom. Make sure that you have a group leader, a recorder, a speaker, a researcher, and a timekeeper. So you're going to take that standard and you're going to unpack it. Discuss the skills, what students must know or be able to do. What thinking levels will our students be required to utilize? And what are some prerequisitions of skills and knowledge that students need to know in order to master this standard? So take the moment to pause the screen and start. Let's look at lesson standard RL 4.3. It tells you that we're going to what? Describe in depth a character, a setting, or an event in a story or a drama, drawing on specific details in the text like character's thoughts on the words or action. Well, let's look at lesson 17. In lesson 17, it tells us to create a timeline of events of Paul Reveal's ride. That's in lesson 17 and it focuses on RL43, but let's look at lesson 18. In lesson 18, in the middle, it tells you to describe the initial atmosphere of the poem. Well, Ms. Granny, if that's the atmosphere of the poem, what is that talking about? It's talking about the setting. So we in, we did an event in 17. 
we are describing a setting in 18. And in lesson 20, it tells you, in your opinion, which best describes Paul reveal the character? Hmm. All of that utilizes RL 4.3. And even in secondary, we must look at the standards to intentionally plan and how those standards support the lessons and how are they used throughout the unit. So let's take a moment to look on the screen. Notice the standards that are highlighted. L 8.6, it acquires and uses accurately grade appropriate general academic and domain specific words and phrases and gather vocabulary knowledge. RI 8.10, by the end of the year, what should students be able to do? They should be able to read and comprehend literary nonfiction. And RI 8.3, students should be able to analyze how a text makes connections among and distinctions between individuals, ideas, or events. All of these standards show an alignment in how to support and build students throughout their academic and vocabulary in order to be able to read and comprehend literary texts and make connections between the ideas, the vocabulary, and an overall comprehension of the text. So take a moment and do our three, two, one quick check. Immediately, can you list three things that you will be able to do from understanding how to unpack the standards? List two students that this will actually impact. And why did you select those students? Then think about, what is one goal you want to do in order to improve your own class? Take those reflections, put it on a sheet of paper, and go back to see if you are utilizing opportunity to dive deeper into the standards and support and impact your student achievement. And as we come to a close, we want to tell you and make you aware of a few of our ELA projects. First, you'll see a line to our lesson plans. We are starting our writing Wednesdays for grades third through 10th grade. We've taken the time to align the Achieve 3000 articles to the curriculum. Now, we wanna take the time to break down our writing and explicitly teach the writing parts throughout the week. So you'll see that implemented and explained in depth through our weekly lesson plans as well as our upcoming projects. We have the Spelling Bee coming up on April 4th and 5th. It will be located at the Children's Knock Knock Museum at 6 p.m. on both nights, April 4th for elementary and April 5th for our middle school students. Who will be our next district-wide Spelling Bee champion? And also, we have our upcoming second annual Poetry Slam on March 30th at Liberty High School, also at 6 p.m. Please make sure that your students are aware of both of these wonderful events and come out to show your support. If you need any support, we are here to serve. Take the time out to scan below to fill out our instructional request form. We thank you and we hope that what we said today will bring impact to your lesson planning. Thank you, EBR. Have a great day. <music>